Welcome to the Power of Healing Your Energy show. I'm Christine. I'm a spiritual medium, intuitive energy coach, old soul healer, and soul purpose mentor. This is a live show and podcast all about unconditional love, your light, your intuition, and your soul's purpose. Season 3, Episode 98 welcomes David Combs, songwriter, photographer, and author of Rachel's song, how this song has transformed the lives of millions of people all over the world. He has also turned it into a new book, Touched by the Music, How the Story and Music of Rachel's Song Can Change Your Life. Depression and anxiety are a side effect of not living your life intuitively, not trusting your gut, the lost connections with yourself and others. And I truly believe healing is the end of conflict within yourself and that healing begins where the ego ends. Replays can be found on my Facebook and YouTube pages. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please follow, and please rate and review wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Hello, everyone. Come on in. Yes, it is episode 98. And it is also Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. First and foremost, I want to um, send prayers Uh, healings, blessings to everyone that has been affected by the British Columbia floods. Uh, Specifically, I am in Abbotsford where they were hit very hard. They were hit hard in Hope. They were also hit hard in Merritt in Princeton. The Coquihalla was taken out as well. And I have left a GoFundMe. There's Uh, or you can donate to your local Red Cross as well. There's lots of Facebook groups out there. So if you're wondering how you can help, um, just go there. And and really, that's uh, the best way. Um, I'm sure you can find someone. If you can't, let me know. And yes, um, you know, this is (laughs) something that um, many, you know, as I looked at some of the websites, did not predict until 2100. Well, they're 80 years early. How can you predict anything? Really? Even if you're psychic, okay? So you you have an intuition of what's going on with the earth, right? So Mother Earth, Gaia, is reclaiming what's hers because um, just a little bit of backstory about Abbotsford I didn't know is that lake was actually drained so it could be farmland. And the whole Fraser Valley all the way out to Vancouver to Hope is a floodplain. So, hi, us humans thinking we can control everything and and use the earth as we please, we are seeing the the effects of it. Anyways, that is going to be a whole nother topic. Today, we are going to talk about music. (laughs) Because anytime, you know, we are in fight, flight or freeze, we're stressed, we're anxious, we're depressed, we're in trauma. Music, I don't know about you, transforms me, transcends, it heals. It uplifts you from the darkest places. It gets you motivated when you need a kick in the pants. <laughs> like, you know, you have your playlist. You Share with me what your playlist is. What do you love about music? Um, and really what, you know, what music has done for you, the, you know, the lives of millions. What kind of music do you love? I love all kinds. Um it, it's it's soothing for plants, for people, for animals, for everybody. So really, it is a absolute um, healing frequency, um, no matter what type of music it is. So and if this you're here, um, you're on the replay, just let us know. Uh, let us know where you're from. Please share this out because uh, we want to get this out to as many people as possible, especially at this time. And uh, my guest, uh, Dave Combs, Um, he is a songwriter, photographer. Like I said, I'm just going to bring him in, and he's got a few little treats for us as well. So welcome, Dave. Thank you. It's great to be here. 
<laughs> and while everyone knows where I am in the world, where are you in the world? I always ask. Well, I am in the great state of North Carolina, right? Pretty smack in the middle of it. There's a, a we call it's called the Piedmont Triad. And I live in with my wife here in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Nice. It's, a it's a beautiful part of the country. We're kind of one hour away from the mountains and we're about three hours away from the beach. And so we're, we can just have it all. So we, we love it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that sounds perfect. You're right in the middle of it. I mean, who doesn't love the mountains? Who doesn't love the beach? Said nobody, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for being here. I, I believe it was a, what, a six month process uh, to finally get yeah. something booked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, met you on the National Publicity Summit, I believe. Right, that was back in June, right? June. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay. It seems yeah. so much, it seems so long ago. I mean, Right. Well, time, time seems to transcend. I think with the pandemic, time has really kind of gotten warped anyway. I mean, you look back and say, where did the last year and a half, almost two years go? And time has just gone like that. And the yes. next thing you know, it's a week's gone by. Where did, where did our time go? So That's right. And then and, and time's an illusion and it's infinite. Really, it is. It's how, it's how you deal with your, your time. I believe it. If you read an hour a day, that's 4% of your day. So read more. Anyways, <laughs> Dawson, uh, thank you so much for being here. He, you know, is saying that music heals. I love listening to Diana Ross. Lots of love from New York. Oh, love that. Lots of love back to you. Yeah. And Diana Ross. Yeah. And you know, there, there's a queen right there. Uh, Wesleyan, so excited to hear your beautiful songs and experiences. Pianos are one of my favorite instruments. Ooh, look at that. Mm -hmm. You got some love there, Dave. Yeah, great. Thank you, Wesleyan. <laughs> and how long, when when did you start uh, playing piano? How did that start for you? Well, I can never remember a time when I couldn't play. Uh, ah. I, my, both my parents played. My grandparents played. Uh, I grew up around music. And, you know, when you're in a musical setting and a family, I guess you, you just kind of feel like, well, this is an extension of what I'm supposed to do. And, and so I really have been playing the piano since I can remember. But uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And for years and years and years, the piano was my mode of relaxing and getting rid of stress. When I would have a stressful day at work and I had, you know, I had a regular job with AT&T, Western Electric. And when I would come home, my way of relaxing was to sit down at the piano and just, you know, play something and just, you know, let my mind go into the music instead of all the other things that happened during the day. Yeah, I hear a lot in that letting go and meditation and really transforming your your whole, you know, mind, body, soul experience, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's beautiful. And where did Rachel's song come from? Well, there's it's a beautiful story. Uh, I actually wrote the tune 30, 40 years ago, 1981. Believe it or not, it's been 40 years. Wow. And I sat, it was one of those times when I sat down at the piano to relax. And that tune came to me. I, I did not sit down to write it. And my only explanation is that I think the tune was inspired. I think God gave me that tune. And so I played it. And then I didn't really realize I had written a song. And one day my wife came home from work. She got home after I did. And so she came in the door and she says, what's the name of this tune that I've had stuck in my head all day long? You play it on the piano all the time. And and uh, what's the name of it? And she hummed a little bit of it. And I said, doesn't have a name. And she says, what do you mean it doesn't have a name? You play it. I said, well, it's just something I made up. And so she got all excited and said, uh, well, have you written it down or anything? I said, no, I got it right up here. <laughs> so she said, well, you know, something might happen to you and that song would be lost. So you better write it down. Well, I did. I wrote down the, the, the melody and the chords and, and stuck it in my piano bench and so at least she was happy that it wouldn't get lost. And then two years later, uh, Christine, the, uh, some friends of ours had a baby girl. Her name was Rachel. And they, the parents asked me and Linda to be her godparents. And so obviously we accept that responsibility. And so at her christening service, uh, we're sitting there in the church. And at the front of the church is a grand piano sitting in the front. And I've been listening to the, the minister do all of his wonderful blessings, things on the little baby girl. And, and when he finished, I whispered to Linda, I said, what do you think about me playing this little song now? 
And she said, Ma, I think that'd be great. So I got up and went up to the family and the minister. I said, uh, before we leave, would it be okay if I played a, a song, a special song on the piano? And they said, well, sure. So everybody sat back down and I went over to the piano and I played this song. And uh, I think maybe now would be a good time for me to play it. What do you think? Absolutely. I'd love right. to hear it. So this is what I played. I'll move my microphone so it'll sound a little bit better. But this is the song that I played. And at the end of the song, I said, from now on, we're going to call this song Rachel's song. And that's how it got its name. But let me play it for you. All right. <laughs> that that was beautiful. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I was in a trance. I was just, I felt like I was on a cloud. Well, it, it touches me every time. I can still, when I play it, I can go right back in my mind to that day and see little Rachel being held in the arms of her mother and saying, this song will be called Rachel's song from now on. And it has, and that's been since then time, not quite 40, about 37 years, but everyone has written to me. I've had over 50,000 people write to me about that song and my music. And it's just very touching. And I mean, it talks about how it touches their soul. It, it reached into their psyche. It, it helped it, them heal. It, it got them over a rough patch. It's, it's just the, the stories are just so uplifting. And in my book, I, I did write a book about it all. The, the stories kind of was the motivation to write this book. But chapter 21 of my book, I put, I don't know, maybe 50 of those stories in here. So, and I love just reading. I'll just go to chapter 21 every once in a while and just read them again because they are so inspiring. You know, when you, when, well, I'm sure you've experienced when you get communication from your listeners and your viewers that say how much your program touched their life, that means something to you. And there's a connection there. And so mm -hmm. that's why I wrote the book. It's, it's really, it's a, it's a journey with a song that started 40 years ago and has never ended and it probably never will end. No. And, and it never should. It's timeless. And yeah. it, it, and like I said, music is, you know, there's no, what's the <laughs> word? There's no fad. It's not a fad. No. And, and you did receive it from God. It was a divine channel, which many musicians, you know, throughout the history have received or, or authors or whoever, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's, but you led with that. That that's really the part that I love is you just went with it. You didn't go, Oh no, I'm just gonna, <laughs> that sounds silly. And then people forget about that. So we actually obstruct our creativity when we do that. And that's why yeah. I ask people to write their dreams down too. And to journal, there's a whole point to this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go to some of the comments, Connor. Thank you, Connor. He's saying absolutely magical and heartwarming. This song sounds like a blooming bright meadow. Wow. With a hint of meliconic nostalgia dashed with high hopes for the future from heaven. Wow. Wow. That sounds like that a... one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. <laughs> My goodness. Yes. <laughs> uh, Madeline is just saying absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Madeline, for being here, by the way. And uh, Dawson. Wow. I didn't want it to end so gorgeous. Dave, you are blessed. Thank you. Thank you, Dawson. <laughs> And you definitely are. Um, and it's, it's look, what were some of the, I guess the highlights? I mean, not only were you, uh, did Jack Canfield, um, he's, he co op did he write the forward for you? He book? wrote the he's forward to my book. And it's interesting because, uh, you, you may remember, I, I met Jack, uh, about, uh, this time last year mm -hmm. at, at a retreat and, uh, it was a virtual retreat. But Jack and I just became fast friends and he, he you know, Jack, he did, he doesn't let, he didn't wait for anything. He immediately went on and got iTunes and downloaded Rachel's song. And he told me, he says, I listened to it once. And he said, wow. And then I listened to it again. I said, wow. Again. So he was really impressed, not impressed. He was very uh, moved by the, the music. And so, uh, he said, Dave, you, you just got to do something. I mean, he, he thought that my stories that I had, accumulated and my music, he said, you just got to get this out there. So, and I said, okay, Jack, will you write the forward to my book for me? And he says, well, you write it first and then I'll see. But apparently he loved it. And so he was gracious enough to write the forward to my book. So I guess when you have the best-selling uh, 
author in the whole world, right? You're forward. That's pretty good territory. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, and the interview uh, with Jack is is on YouTube as well. Right. I've seen that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I've also put your website in. And if anybody wants to purchase your book, um, it's out on Amazon. So I've put all the links for that. Um, as well, if anybody has any questions about music or, you know, writing music or anything for, for Dave, please. Sure. Fire here. away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fire away. You've got a captive audience here. Let's take advantage of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I, I guess maybe we all have a song hidden inside of us. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you help? I guess there's four easy steps that you can assist with. Let's say someone's interested in writing, but they're not sure where to start. Well, How does that work? Really, my in fact, there's a chapter in my book about a friend of mine who had written a song and kept it in his head and not shared it with anybody until, unfortunately, one month before he passed away. Okay. But yes. it was that process of asking him. He, he said, I've written this song. And I said, okay, well, hum it for me. And he did. And I said, this is a great song. So I said... He said, well, I don't know the notes. I don't know music or anything. And I said, well, I do. <laughs> and I will help you out. So I jumped on it immediately and wrote it down and got the music written down and actually played a little arrangement of it for him. And, and then I, I sent it to my friend Gary Prem in Nashville, who has been the artist on all of my recordings. And Gary is such a gifted and, and wonderful person. He's a just a terrific musician. Uh, he's played on all kinds of of famous recording artist albums. He's a studio musician, but he's also a songwriter too. But anyway, he took this song that I had gotten from my friend Jim and he, I said, well, Jim is apparently on his deathbed and is, is in and out of consciousness. And I don't even know whether he'll be able to hear it or not, but would you record your rendition of Jim's song for me? And he did that, sent me the MP3 file. I sent it to the family. They played it for Jim on his deathbed and it would played continuously until he passed away. So there is a story about somebody's song that now has been captured and his family can enjoy that song from their grandfather and their father forever. I mean, that's, it's there and for them. And I would say for anybody who has this song humming, running around in your head that, uh, find you a musician. There are lots of musicians around that are very talented, just, Hum it for them and say, well, you know, what do you think about this? And most of the time they'll say, well, I can, I'll write that down for you and whatever. So there are ways to take your little song and find a musician to help you get it out. Cause who knows, you, you may have a hit song rattle around in your head. So you just, you need to get it out. That's true to, to not, yeah. Don't um, keep the music uh, hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I think of Lo, uh, Leo Tolstoy when he wrote uh, the uh, Man's Search for Meaning. He wrote that book. It's the same idea. And Wayne Dyer yeah. talks about it, too, is don't die with the music still left in you. Whatever that happens to be, go create, go write, go whatever, go climb that mountain, whatever it is, go do it. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to go through a door when it opens and see what's on the other side. <laughs> too many people, I think, are so afraid of what they don't know about something and they won't take the step to go in and find out. And I'm afraid that so many things that good things that could have happened kind of die because somebody did not take action to, to go take that step and explore the possibilities. That's uh, that's just been something that I've fortunately been able to do. And so a lot of it, I'm, I have to give credit to my wife, Linda. She's the great encourager. She's the one that says, you know, you need to get this out. You need to write this book. You need to do this. So uh, we work together really well. And she's she's a real partner in that uh, creation process. Oh, that's lovely that you have a partner. That's really important. A supporter of each other, right? That's right. <laughs> lovely. Uh, Dawson is just asking, do you have any musical inspirations? He, he's asking you and me and maybe for everybody who's listening, I, I guess I'll let you go first. Is there, are there some people that are just really stand out for you? Oh, lots of them. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think back to when I was growing up, uh, Roger Williams, you may remember the piano player, Roger Williams. Yes. Yeah. He, it was an incredible musician and I loved his music. My mom, my mother bought all his albums and I loved listening to those records and, and I love Henry Mancini. Uh, uh, 
those those songs are just fantastic and all of those wonderful instrumental numbers or even the you know i like the beatles you know hey jude i must have played hey jude on the piano like <laughs> remember i graduated in college in 69 if i'm remembering right 69 was the year that hey jude hit the charts Yes. Well, all of us music folks, we, you, you go over walking around campus singing, Hey Jude. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just love music that has catchy tunes and a good melody and a good structure. It's just uh, all kinds of, I love jazz. I, I don't play jazz very well because it's, it's so complicated, but I sure do appreciate it and have friends who are very good at it. But uh, so I love that. I love classical. I love all the instruments. I love a violin, a viola, the the uh, symphony. And speaking of symphony, when I first wrote Rachel's song, Christine, you'll appreciate this. And one of the first, first people I played it for was my dear friend, Peter Pere, who was the conductor of the Winston Salem symphony orchestra. And we loved our local symphony. And Peter is such a wonderful uh, music, music director and conductor. And so I played the recording of Rachel's song that I had the demo that I had gotten made, which by the way, the demo that you hear on, when you buy an album is my original demo recording unchanged, never been re-recorded. But anyway, I played that recording for Peter and he said he was just moved almost to tears. And he said, Dave, you need to have that orchestrated for symphony. And I said, really, how do I do that? <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a arranger for symphony. And he said, well, I know, I know just the person and his name is Fred Tanner and he's the head of the music department at Winston Salem state university. Go, go, go see Fred. So I did. I, <laughs> so I went, took my cassette tape and I walked in Fred's office and I said, Peter Pere says, you need to hear this song. And he said, okay, let's hear it. So he played it. And now here's a guy that is a, the head of the music department for the university. So he doesn't have time to do a, an arrangement for somebody like me or a song or whatever. I, I, I knew he was very, very busy. And so he finished listening to the song and I could tell by the look on his face, he was moved by the music. He looked at me and he says, Dave, I don't have time to do this, but I have to do this. Aw. Isn't that special? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yep. And so sure enough, I, he said, just give me a, you know, several weeks here and I'll, and I'll do it. So uh, about Christmas time, this was like in November and about Christmas time, he gave me a call and said, Dave, I got your arrangement ready. Went by his office, picked it up and here's this, Ma conductor's manuscript, you know, the uh, conductor score, if you've, if you've seen it, it's got all the instruments. There's 24 instruments, I think, in this symphony and every instrument had its line of music. So it's many pages of music by every instrument. And I said, wow, Fred, what does it sound like? And he says, I've only heard it in my head. It's never been played by a live symphony. Now, can, can you, those people that have that gift of hearing music in their head and writing it down. And it's like, you know, when Be I, I think the stories of Beethoven and these Mozart, all these people that wrote a lot of symphonies uh, and music, they'd never heard it until it really got played, mm. but it was playing in their head. Well, I took wow. it, to I took it to Peter and he says, wow, this is great. He says, I tell you what, I want to play this at our Valentine's day concert in February. I said, wow. Okay. So, Gave, I made copies of all the music for him so he could give it to all the musicians. And then come rehearsal night on a Saturday night, Linda and I went over to hear the rehearsal. And we're there, we walk in, and of course, Peter introduces us to the, a lot of the musicians. And, and then they play through Rachel's song. Of course, my song is, as you heard, it's a very simple melody. It's, it's, it's not complicated. It's, you know, it's not a very complicated melody. And so... They played through it flawlessly the first time. And then, and then uh, they, he played one more time. And then he says, okay, tomorrow at the concert, would you like to conduct your composition? Whoa. <laughs> you know, that's a life for a musician to be able to stand up and conduct a symphony of music. It's just a dream, a dream come true. And I, I was just, I didn't know what to say, except of course. Yes. <laughs> and so on Sunday that afternoon at the concert, and it was a packed house. There were 900 and some people there at come time to play my song. He introduced me. And as I walked up to the stage, he flips over the baton handle first and hands it to me, ready for me to conduct. And he says, the podium is yours. 
And so I step up on the podium and conduct Rachel's song. And I wish we had time, but I would, I have a recording of that actual performance. And it is, it just, I love to play along with it because it's a symphony. And then I can play right along with the symphony. It's, it's really special, but that's just one. We could talk about this all night. As you could tell, I've got tons. Of <laughs> You've stories. got lots of stories. So uh, those stories are in my book. So you that's, get right, <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> right. Or head on over to a YouTube channel as well if you want. Yeah, to Yeah, they can more, do that. Right? Yeah, that's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Uh, Connor is just asking, what uh, fuels your creativity in times where you feel stuck? Do you think it's crucial to be able to read sheet music? Uh, the answer to the able to read sheet music is no. Okay. I do not think that because there are so many Nash Nashville fabulous musicians. They don't read music. Gary mm -hmm. Prim can read some music. I mean, he's, he's not, not unable to read, but he plays by ear. You know, he, he knows the music comes out of his, his mind and his creativity. And so he's not stuck with the notes that are on the, on paper. So it's, it's okay. And it's, I think it's very helpful to be able to read sheet music so that you can appreciate what you've just done, but you can always get somebody else to transcribe what you just did and put it in sheet music form. But in terms of what fuels my creativity, a lot of times it's just, it's just this, you know, I'm, I'm sitting, I'll sit at the piano and just let the notes kind of soak in and sometimes a melody will come sometimes it won't but just I, I think of it as me and the piano having a conversation if that makes sense it does I mean that's you know it, it, the more that you play you know the, the more something happens or doesn't happen maybe it happens later but it's all about just being in the moment mm -hmm. yeah Oh, that's yeah. lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all your stories. <laughs> There's so many. And, but I think the biggest one is, you know, um, you have cover art for Rachel's song and it's cherry blossoms. And I love cherry blossoms. I don't know about anybody else, but I also had shared a video of cherry blossoms um, to my mom and my mom had passed in April, but I shared it with her in February. They were still blooming where I lived because where mm -hmm. she lived, it was the dead of winter. So that, you know, just seeing that, uh, that artwork, um, you know, just touched mm -hmm. my heart. And I, I know my mom's here right now. Uh, she loves music. Yeah. I love all kinds of music as well. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because Dawson was asking about um, uh, musical inspirations. I'm all over the map. I love anything. <laughs> I mean, I was more excited to see Tony Bennett live than my mom was. And I, went, I bought the tickets for my mom. <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole nother story. Yeah. And, and you know, Lionel Richie and uh, oh, yes. George Michael, you know, I'm thinking of like crooners. My mom loved Liberace, Elvis. Yes. I mean, that that's the kind of, that's soul, you know, the soul music. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really what I, what I love. It's the tones and all of that. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty much open to anything. Um, yeah. And Connor's just saying conversations with your instrument. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, why not? That, yeah, but the, the fact that you help so many um, elderly um, and and seniors residences with your music, you want to talk about that a little bit? Because sure. I love, yeah. you know, I love our seniors. I mean, they're the backbone. I do too. And, uh, you know, it's we all remember a year and a half ago, I guess it was around February, early March is when the things were really going south in a hurry. And yes. uh, I remember when our governor declared a state of emergency. And I think about the same time everybody else did. And what that resort resorted in was basically a lockdown of these elderly facilities like assisted living places and nursing homes. They basically said visitors, no more visitors. The, the staff has got to be, you know, sequestered and all this kind of, you got to stay in your room. You can't go out to the dining room. You can't go to uh, activities or anything. You're, you're basically locked in your room. Well, you know, my mother uh, came to Winston-Salem to live in an assisted living facility in 2014. And she lived for two and a half years, about five miles from where we live here. And it's, you know, I would go see her every day at her assisted living. She was in great mental health, but it was her physical abilities that were 
not doing so well. So I would go out every day and visit with my mom and I would, they all, all of her quote neighbors in the nursing, in the assisted living eventually knew about my music. And so they would invite me to come out and they had a, a wonderful piano in there that I could sit down and play. And they, they loved to hear me play music. And so I knew how much my music helped them to get their minds off of everything else. And it was a soothing effect on them. And it just broke my heart when I learned on these news stories about families where the husband no longer could go see his wife yeah. or the children could no longer go see their parents. And, uh, and, and we have personal stories of people that it, it was so tragic that some, they didn't get to see their spouse for six months in person. They could only see him through a window. And so that broke my heart. And so I said, I've got to do something if I can to help relieve some of this stress. And so I knew that my music would do that. And so I have, and I'm a photographer too. I love to take uh, pictures. And when I worked in Washington, DC, I must've taken a million pictures of those uh, cherry blossoms around the Jefferson Memorial, the, uh, at, at the Jefferson Memorial. So anyway, I, I just said, well, I'm gonna match my photography and my music, and I'm gonna create some YouTube videos and we'll just call it music videos of my music and photography. And so I, I said, well, they're going to need some that are only one song long so that they can play one and then do something else. But there was another category that I thought these staff people at nursing homes and assisted, they don't have time to go mess with a player and say, all right, rewind and play and go play it again, play it again. So I made videos of my music and photography that would play for six and a half to seven hours. Wow. You put it on. And you just push play and you walk away and it's playing all day long. You don't have to worry about it. And the same, they could play it in their rooms. They could put it up on a big screen in an auditorium, wherever. And so I, I personally called 240 nursing homes and assisted living facilities in North Carolina just to test out my idea. And I didn't speak to just anybody. I said, I want to speak to the activity director. And those are the people that are charged with keeping people uh, engaged with entertainment or whatever. <laughs> in fact, when I would call them, I, they'd get on the phone. I'd say, are you the person in charge of keeping everybody happy? <laughs> and say, they would chuckle and they'd say, yeah, that's me. That's me. So anyway, I, I, and to the, to the person, they all appreciated me sending them the YouTube links to that music. And I said, well, North Carolina has got, well, I don't know, 600 or so facilities in, in North Carolina. And I can't call all of them. And then there's, there's 44,000 across the whole United States. I can't call all of them. I don't have enough time. So I got the idea that, well, maybe somebody does have these people on a mailing list or some kind. And sure enough, there's a nursing home association in every state, a assisted living association in every state, and there's even a national. So I started calling and it turns out there's 66 of those associations. And I did call all 66 of them and said, here's what I'm doing. Would you publicize the links to my music that I'm wanting to get out to these fine people? And almost all of them said, sure, we'd be happy to do that. So I was able to get my music out to those people that could use it across the entire United States. And I, I was so happy that that was able to be happen. Wow. I love that. And thank you for doing that because they, they you know, the most vulnerable um, and the most isolated and um, what a gift. And Thank I heard so from, I, I got some wonderful feedback from those as well, of how much they really deeply appreciated it. That was special. Yes, it is. I mean, music for them, even, you know, animals, anything that can lift the, their spirits really mm -hmm. tra transforms their energy physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it. So. Thank yeah. you so much for doing that. Gosh, um, I always have two um, questions uh, to wrap up the show that I ask each guest, and I and I don't give them to you beforehand, so surprise. <laughs> okay, Here we go. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, how can we, as a collective energy, all of us, help make your dreams come true? Is there? Do you have like I always call it a Moby Dick? Is there something that? You, you need some help with or would love to see in the world? Well, I, I really feel like that I was, first of all, I was given the song 
And I feel like Rachel's song was given to me for a reason. So it's not a song that I should just, okay, put it in the piano bench and leave it alone. So I think that the good Lord also entrusted me with getting that song out to where it was going to be able to help people. And so I think the main thing that folks can do to help me, it's not really help me, but to help other people is to spread the word, share this, share this YouTube video with all your friends, tell your, your, all your friends to share it with their friends. And let's, let's, let's get this spread around. And, and I think that would do more for me than, than anything. If I could just see that other people felt enough, strongly enough about it to share it with their friends. Absolutely. And, and especially maybe they're wondering, how can I help this loved one? Or how can I help a friend or someone that's isolated? You just share this, share his music. And you just never know that one small gesture, it creates a ripple and that we need more ripples. Mm -hmm. We need You're more right. ripples out there. Exactly. All right. And uh, last question, what does magic mean to you? Magic is when something occurs that you were totally unexpected. And uh, I don't, sometimes magic has a negative or a dark connotation to it. But to me, Magic is like, for example, when I observed Gary Prim playing my song that I had never heard anybody else play but me in the studio recording Rachel's song, like you'll hear you hear on the album. And the effect that had on me to realize that what I was listening to was something that I created, but the magic was that it, it somebody else took it and made it into something that was even larger and more special than what I had ever envisioned. And so, so to me, that's the connotation that I think of when the magic happens is if you ever have a chance to go to a recording session in Nashville, New York, Los Angeles, Atlanta, wherever, take advantage of it. You will not believe it's like going to the birth of a baby because you're going to hear something created that is spectacular and beautiful that the world has never heard before. It's just, it's magic. Yeah, I, I love that. And your magic for me is all is really love and light. It's all about love. It's all about light. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much uh, for being on the show. Um, again, I've shared all the links for, you know, the, his website for YouTube. Go have a listen. Go share this out, please. And as well as the new book. Um, so looking forward to reading that. And is there anything else you want to share with us before we say goodbye? Well, I just want to tell folks that when they do go look for the book, it's available as a paperback, as a Kindle. And if you want to hear me in my Southern accent, East Tennessee accent, read for eight hours, you can get an audible uh, audio book. <laughs> I spent a lot of time reading it. So you can get it in all three of those forms. Oh, that's amazing. And, and we love your accent. It's, <laughs> well, it's thank you. <laughs> it's adorable. Well, I love you. You, you. you folks from Canada are just wonderful too. Some of my dearest friends here and we didn't have time to tell the story, but my, my dear partner in music here in Winston-Salem is from Canada. Oh, well, there you from, go. From Toronto. So <laughs> Toronto wonderful, okay. Wonderful people. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, Madeline is just saying, thank you for your inspiration. Thank you, Madeline. Yes. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here again. Please share this out. If you have a guest that you'd love to have on the show, please send them my way. You can, you know, send me a, a video message and audio, whatever it happens to be, or, you know, good old fashioned text. And um, I just wanted to share the universal message for today. I, I come across this. Um, the universe is saying to you right now, remove your fears and doubts and move forward in faith, knowing the only limits are those you set upon yourself. So really love yourself and allow your intuition to lead you to where you are meant to go, not where you think you're supposed to go or if certain circumstances happen or this and we're all controlling. No, no, no. Let it go. Release and just say I'm welcoming in whatever is available to me um, in this now moment. And I also want to just add, I've got a few uh, housekeeping as well. If you're looking for a safe space, um, unleash your soul's purpose. It's completely free. It's on Zoom. If you need the link for that, it's Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific. And it's a great space to share and connect and get to know other people. 
um, you know, that we're all on this purpose in our soul's journey together. As well, my November energy update is still up and running. And if you're wondering if you'd like to work with me or maybe have a reading or healing, um, we've got mentorship going on one-on-one -on -one or in a group and also some mediumship training, Reiki training and healing and soul purpose readings. And I'm going to put, promote my book because I never do. <laughs> <laughs> Intuition Saved My Life is out as well on Amazon through Kindle and paperback. And I got to get on the audio uh, train as well and get that done because if Dave's done it, I absolutely have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> All right. And uh, thank you so much, Dave, for being here, sharing your, your music and your love of music um, and your beautiful soul. We appreciate you. Well, thank you, Christine. It has really been a pleasure to finally get on the program with you. I yes. thoroughly enjoyed this. Maybe we can do it again some other time. Play some more oh, music. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I'd love to. I, I'd love to. Thank you so much. And hey, guys, please remember, healing begins where the ego ends. Take care.